Ken Whiting with Paddle TV with another paddling tip. And this time around, I am giving a white water paddling tip and more specifically, three invaluable drills to improve your white water paddling. And surprisingly enough, these drills are all going to happen on flat water. And so let's just dive right into it and talk about the first drill, which is a carving drill. And why this is important, first of all, why is carving important? Well, carving is important for a variety of reasons, right from the very beginning. Carving is how you make solid, efficient eddy turns. It's how you make good ferries. But also, it's, it unlocks the door to all sorts of other cool moves, including surfing waves and lots of play moves. So learning to carve instead of learning uh, allowing your boat to spin out is an invaluable skill to learn. And this drill is designed all around that. And I'll just jump right into it and show you what's involved. What you're going to do is you're going to start, get a little bit of speed, establish a little spin momentum. My boat wants to turn in this direction. I'm going to put my boat on edge. And at this point, I'm just using forward strokes on the inside of the turn here to keep my boat carving in a circle. Now, the only way this is possible to take strokes on the inside of a turn and not turn my boat in the other direction, well, there's two things. One, it's keeping my boat on edge. And so I'm balanced on my, in this case, my left butt cheek. My right knee is fine tuning the tilt. Now, the other big key is my paddle position. When I'm doing this, my paddle has to be vertical. You can see that the paddle shaft is vertical as I take the stroke. If my paddle isn't vertical when I take the stroke, it's ho more horizontal, it's going to kill my spin momentum. So vertical paddle. And that's kind of the trick to this technique is because with a vertical paddle, you're not relying on the paddle as a brace. It's not providing any balancing support at all because it's vertical. <laughs> and so you have to rely on your own balance. You have to rely on your comfort and sitting on that butt cheek and fine tuning the tilt with your upper knee. Now, once you become comfortable with that carving drill in both directions, because you have to be able to carve confidently in both directions. The next thing you need to do is to add power to it. Now, I was once told that whitewater kayaking is all technique, no power. And there is some truth to that. Technique will take you a very long way with whitewater kayaking, whereas power isn't going to get you nearly as far. But like any sport, it's the same as golf. With golf, you have to have the right technique, but the best golfers in the world, they have perfect technique and they've learned to apply all their power to that technique and not have technique suffer. And so that's the next trick is how do you start applying power to this, this uh, drill? And the way you do that, I'll get moving again. I'll get carving again. The way I'm going to apply power is I'm going to pull more aggressively on the paddle and thrust my hips forward as I take that stroke. Now, that technique involves the whole body a lot. Uh, it involves your stomach muscles. It still requires you to keep that steady edge, you keep your balance. And you might recognize that stroke as being the stroke as the boof stroke, the stroke that that you take when you go off of a waterfall and thrust your boat over the lip. And it is when you're boofing off a waterfall, it's important to be able to hold a tilt on your boat, have a vertical paddle. So my last stroke when I'm going over waterfall isn't all of a sudden turning my boat sideways going over the waterfall. So I mean, that's just one application, one of many applications. Of mo for most people, a more common application is eddy turns. 
I'm, when I'm approaching an eddy and I want to cut into the main current, I'm going to paddle towards that, that eddy line. I'm going to get some speed and as I cross that eddy line, especially if it's a powerful eddy line, I want to thrust my boat right across the eddy line into the main current so I don't get spun on the funny water of the eddy line. Lots of applications and that's why this is such an important drill to learn and that's all I got to say about this one. Let's move on to the second drill. But before I do, I have to say, you know, a quick shout out of thanks to the sponsor of this video and that's the uh, Piranha and what the boat I'm using right here. This is the Ripper 2, the second generation of the Ripper. I just did a full testing on the Otto River of this kayak and did a, you, I'll leave a link in the description box down below to my full review of this kayak. This is a half slice, big up front and all, as they say, business up front and party in the back. Slicey stern back here. It's my kind of all-round boat. This is, really is an all-round boat. This is a boat that's designed to run rivers. Uh, it's designed to also play when you, when you have the opportunity to surf waves, play around in holes, eddy lines. It's, uh, it really is an all-round kayak and I had an absolute blast in it. So check out the, uh, the full review down below to see if it's the right kayak for you. So the second drill we are going to look at is pivot turns. Now this drill is reserved to kayaks with slice somewhat of a slicey stern or a very slicey stern. So half slices, uh, of course any play boat, but not really a creek boat. You can actually learn to use this technique a little bit in a creek boat in the right situation, but that's not, it's not a, a realistic thing to practice on flat water. And so what are pivot turns? Pivot turns are involve sinking the one end of the kayak, really the stern of the kayak underwater to make your uh, a spin faster. Like that. That is uh, a very simple forward sweep pivot turn. The reason a pivot turn is important to learn is for one, you learn how to control your kayak spin momentum. Whitewater kayaks are designed to turn, not to go straight. And so uh, what you need to learn is how to control that spinning momentum that a kayak always has. The second thing you learn is how to harness the power of buoyancy energy. And what's buoyancy energy? Well, buoyancy energy is the energy your kayak has any time an end of the kayak is underwater. It doesn't want to be underwater. It wants to be on the surface and you can use that to your advantage. Uh, and the third thing it teaches you is just edge control. You can practice this with either a forward sweep or a reverse sweep, and it's good to practice, practice both ways, but we're gonna start by practicing this with a forward sweep. The idea is to sink the stern of the kayak with, as I take the forward sweep, to sink the stern of the kayak. Now, once that stern has been sunk, it doesn't wanna be underwater. So before my stroke has finished, I have to level off the kayak. If I don't level off the kayak in time, then what's gonna happen, that stern says, nope, I wanna be back on the surface and it's gonna hit the wall, we call hit the wall, it'll pop back to the surface. If I do level off the stern in time, then, it comes back to the surface, but it comes back to the surface in the direction that I want it to come back into the surface, and it keeps my boat spinning uh, in a full circle. Now, uh, a couple things to note when doing this. First of all, when you take at the beginning of the stroke, you can be the most aggressive throwing your stern downwards because it's it's on the surface. It doesn't have a lot of buoyancy energy. As you pull that stern down as you take your stroke and your stern is is going further underwater it has more and more buoyancy energy and your stroke is starting to lose power and so you need to level off your angle so that it is completely level by the time your stroke is finished this is not a hard angle to flat but when the uh when your, your stroke is finished this is a start as aggressive as you comfortably can and then gradually level it off so that it is level by the time your stroke is done. Most aggressive at the beginning and then 
flat and I just keep spinning around. This can be practiced in a variety of ways. This can be practiced, like I said, with a forward sweep and you should practice it on both sides, get proficient on both sides because you're not only going to have to edge in one direction and you, uh, you can practice this with a back sweep. And that's effectively a stern squirt. Uh, you can use, do this with the help of an eddy line to actually do an, a river stern squirt, but that's not what I want you to do when really practicing this drill. I want you to do this in flat water because that tells you when you're doing something wrong. And if you don't level off that boat in time, you're gonna hit the wall and your boat's gonna lose all that spin momentum that you, that you initiated. So there you go. That is the second drill that you need to practice on flat water. So the third drill that all whitewater kayakers should be practicing on flat water is a really simple skill. It's back paddling. And I know that sounds very simplistic, but the reason back paddling is so important, there's a variety of reasons in fact. For one, the more time you spend back paddling, the more back general backward awareness you have, how to, without thinking about it, how to control your kayak when you're going backwards. And the impact that this has is that when you're on a river, I'd say that most people, if there was such a thing as a panic button on, your, on a kayak, that panic button is going to get hit when you end up turned around and facing backwards on in the middle of a rapid. And the reason for that is, most of the time, is because people don't have the same awareness backwards as they do forwards. And that just comes with practice, spending time backwards and knowing, hey, I know how to get out of this position, or maybe I don't even need to get out of this position. Maybe I can use this position to uh, my advantage. It just takes time. And so I should tell a very quick story <laughs> here. The biggest jump that my whitewater paddling ever took was one summer that where a buddy and I, we decided we were paddling the Otto River every day for a couple of summers. And what that summer we decided, you know what? We're gonna paddle the river for this month uh, backwards. We're gonna run every rapid uh, backwards, catch every wave backwards, do everything backwards that we would normally do forwards. Yes, we got beaten up a few times. <laughs> we, got, we got our butt handed to us uh, on occasion, but the improvement that we saw after that month was truly remarkable. I've never seen my paddling take a jump, jump like that. And I wouldn't say that that's something that everybody out there should go and do necessarily, but there, uh, there are less aggressive things that you can do. When you get a nice eddy, eddy line, practice eddy turns backwards, practice ferries backwards, practice things backwards. And if you're bold enough, practice running some rapids backwards. Just practice catching waves backwards, practice things backwards. And it all starts with just in your warm up when you get on the water, back paddle. The other great thing about back paddling is that it works the front deltoids and in the chest, muscles that you don't use as often when you're forward paddling. So it balances the body out too. Now, a couple of things to think about when you're back paddling, especially if you have a slicey stern. You wanna keep your weight forward slightly as you're back paddling, not a lot. You don't wanna be pressed, you don't wanna be pressed forwards. Keep your weight forward slightly and tilt the boat slightly into each stroke you take, just slightly. The effect that will have is it will lift your, keep your stern edges out of the water. So there you have it, the three drills that all whitewater paddlers should be practicing and ultimately should master. Uh, those three things will have a profound impact on your whitewater paddling. And it's amazing that you can do it on flat water. I hope you guys have enjoyed this tip. If you have, you know, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to Paddle TV if you haven't already. And if you have anything to add, any comments to, or any other cool uh, drills to share with people, leave a comment down below and we'll see you again soon for another paddling tip, paddling adventure, or gear review. <laughs>